Oregon's forests alive, dynamic, and growing. About 40% of our forests are privately owned, a little over 11 million acres. Some of that is owned by larger commercial and industrial landowners, but much more is owned by small, private, or individual forest landowners. People who own anywhere from one to several thousand acres. Many of these Oregonians are tree farmers. These are people who care about the land, its resources, and the environment. These are people who have learned and share sound land management techniques to accomplish their objectives, which range from raising trees as a crop, to Christmas tree farmers, to folks who are interested in creating wildlife habitat on their land. These are people who are putting much more into the land than they are taking out, who recognize the value and need of good land stewardship now and for generations to come. Many of these people have come together under one banner to share information, teach others, and recognize the accomplishments of those practicing good forest stewardship and sustainable forest management. The tree farm system, I think, is one of the most important movements ever to hit natural resources in this country. It's a system that brings together landowners uh, from various walks of life, landowners who are doing various kinds of things on their land, and brings them together in a fashion that allows them to share information, to learn, and to help others learn uh, practices about forestry and ways that they can manage their tree farms more effectively. It's a wonderful program and it's been in place for a number of years. We here in Oregon are active participants in that. People within the Oregon tree farm system embody an understanding of the value of management to our forests. We uh, believe that our timberland should be managed uh, unmanaged land is subject to a series of events, uh, mother nature, natural conditions, which may not always be in the best benefit of all parts of the uh, landscape, the ecosystem as it's called. If you manage your timberland, you can manage for a whole array of values across the landscape. There are many different values for which a person could manage on their forest land, but what would it take to participate? Any individual can join the Oregon Tree Farm System as well as uh, organizations or business entities as long as they own 10 acres or more of timberland and manage that timberland for the production of timber and other forest products while recognizing the importance of soils, waters, uh, wildlife and recreational benefits. And you can manage for, as I said before, a whole host of values other than just forest values, timber values, clean air, water, fish and wildlife habitat, aesthetics. I think most importantly it has to be adaptive and that gives you the ability to uh, bring into your plan any new research, science uh, that might give you better tools to work with. So let's take a look at some of the interesting and diverse ways a few Oregon tree farmers are managing their lands to see what ideas we might pick up. Some people are interested in growing trees for their commercial values and biodiversity. We manage for six different commercial species here. We think this diversity is important in spreading the risk of disease and to meet many of the different market needs as the trees reach maturity. The Bowders have done something different and unique on their tree farm. On our 240-acre Bowders Emerald Forest tree farm, we, uh, in 1978, incorporated Camp Emerald Forest as a nonprofit Christian forest retreat. Uh, we've hosted thousands of churches, uh, people from churches, schools, Willamette University, Warner Pacific, um, Japanese students and students from Taiwan this year. And um, uh, we have a two-acre lake for swimming and boating. Another interesting concept the Bowders are doing on their tree farm is to utilize the shade from their Douglas fir forest to grow herbs and medicinal plants. We are simulating wild-grown American ginseng by planting under the Douglas fir canopy. And we're also growing the herbs echinacea and golden seal. We've exchanged ideas and gained knowledge through workshops and forestry tours and contacts with forestry professionals and fellow tree farmers. 
Ideas for managing forests come in many shapes and sizes. Dr. Ralph Winger, a chiropractor by profession, has incorporated a unique interest into the world's first endangered species animal hospital on his tree farm. Utilizing lumber from his farm, he has developed the International Wildlife Recovery Center. This facility here that we'll be showing you tonight and, and going through is, is one building out of six that we've created in Jackson County. And the reason we've done this is to be able to respond to wildlife that are affected by oil spills. Um, why did we do that? Well, it started with the Exxon Valdez a number of years ago. Looking at that and after the federal legislation was passed uh, that established the Oil Pollution Response Act, um, it became clear to me that there was probably a better way to do some response to threatened and endangered species specifically. Other folks are interested in helping to create additional habitat on their property for wildlife and incorporating that into the management of their tree farm and other agroforestry activities on their property. I've reduced the number of cattle on the property to less than 50% of the carrying capacity to eliminate overgrazing, which might occur due to increase in size of deer and elk herds. And I've cooperated with the ODF and W in the planning of elk mix seed. In 1993, this work was done by volunteers of the Oregon Hunters Association. I'm currently working with Mark Farkas, our ODF and W habitat person, on a wildlife management plan. All of these people are interested in maintaining a healthy forest ecosystem on their tree farms. Managing for that just makes good sense. John and Lynn Breeze have also included special resource learning workshops on their ranch tree farm. Our outreach to the public expanded when a Portland friend asked questions which, when we finally understood what she was asking, made us realize that for all her wisdom in her field of public relations, she had frighteningly little understanding of soil, water, plants, and wildlife. When we urged her to bring Portland friends to hike with us, she responded, how about if we come and work with you? It was a great idea. We do projects which can be completed in one day so everyone can share our pride in a job well done. Projects have included spring and water development. We have fenced out sensitive areas like aspen groves to keep the elk and the cattle out. We do small cross fences to control livestock. Another far-reaching management consideration that Dr. Winger included on his property has benefited not only his neighbors, but our public forests as well. One of the other things we did was when entered a cooperative agreement with the Oregon Department of Forestry and they provided uh, a crew that was learning and we picked out a site in, in consultation with our consulting forester and located a heliport on that site and it now stands as a staging area that's been used every year for the last four years for fire suppression for this end of the county. These have been a few of the creative examples of some of Oregon's tree farm members in applying a wide variety of management applications to their forest management plan. This may help give you a few ideas of what might be done on your property, but how does one get started? Who do you contact to get some information? The tree farm system actually in some ways is almost like a clearinghouse. Uh, they have available brochures from Extension, their own publications, uh, service forestry, and uh, just a phone call or a letter can uh, avail you of a whole host of information and uh, resource uh, agencies that are, uh, have programs that can help forest land owners. So contacting the Oregon Tree Farm System can help put you in touch with a variety of services available to landowners. The Forestry Extension Program has focused on landowner needs, primarily non-industrial private forest landowner needs, and they do so in providing problem-solving education. Uh, we do not provide management plans for forest uh, landowners, but we help forest landowners understand uh, what opportunities uh, they may take advantage of on their lands to meet their own goals. The Extension Forestry Program offers um, many, uh, a wide variety of educational services to landowners uh, within Oregon. Um, a lot of the things that we do are informal education, actually, where uh, we have classes, um, workshops, uh, tours and outside demonstrations. Um, really the classroom, the forest is our classroom 
Um, we also do quite a few other things from writing publications, how-to kinds of publications that landowners can use. We also do instructional videos to help people um, uh, with certain aspects of the management of their property. So what should be the first thing that someone should do in deciding upon what type of management they might choose for their forest land? I think one of the most important things about managing your tree farm is really taking the, the, the long view, the long, what you want your forest to look like. Because if you don't have a plan, you probably won't get there. And I think spending time uh, with you and your spouse or with your family members trying to decide what you want your forest to look like and what it's ecologically capable of producing is important. A management plan is, uh, in my opinion, very, very desirable and needed. One thing it does, it sets down on paper those things you have mentally in your mind and provides a pathway of goals from getting from point A to point B through time and you can address any conditions that you find on your property. So you have some questions. How do you get help uh, on, your, on your tree farm? Who goes out and, and helps? Well, the Oregon Department of, of Forestry um, has a cadre of service foresters, and um, oftentimes they will come out, uh, walk the property with you, and give you some advice on, on how you might go about managing your, your property. There are also other programs available to the landowner. The Stewardship Plan, or SIP, for instance. The Stewardship Plan, the Department of Forestry works with landowners and consultants, right? Uh, integrates a landowner's objectives with the variety of resources that the landowner has on his property in a way that uh, protects all the resources and improves those of the land that meet those landowners' objectives. So the Oregon Tree Farm Systems Program really is beneficial in meeting that uh, as a partner and meeting that objective of getting the word out of what you can do in managing your lands. Obviously then, managing our forest lands is important. Now, how do we go about writing our forest plan? There are several ways you can get a plan developed. You can have a service forester help you write it. You can write it as a primary author and have some resource professional uh, work with you. Or you can hire a consultant forester to write your plan for you. Are there other considerations that a forest land owner would want to consider and include in their management plan? Oregon has a Forest Practices Act that basically says its principles are that uh, we can manage our lands in a way to ha harvest trees forever and protect the other resources. In this light, it very much meshes with landowners' objectives and the tree farm system in active management. Who would need to know about or comply with the Forest Practices Act? In Oregon, there's a bit over 166,000 small woodland owners, those that own between 1 and 5,000 acres. And over 100,000 of them are in that 10, one acre to 10 category. The Forest Practice Act has jurisdiction over all lands where trees are harvested. So it doesn't make any difference if you own one acre or 5,000 acres. Uh, the tree farm system and others can help you blend your objectives with, and, and stay in compliance with the Forest Practice Act. Another very important resource here in Oregon is our water. Some of the purest and cleanest in the nation. Protecting our water resources and the riparian areas associated with those is of particular interest to tree farmers in Oregon. Well, riparian areas are kind of a special place. It's kind of where the water meets the upland. And sometimes they can be sensitive because of fish and potential sediment from activities, um, land management activities of your tree farm around streams. Forest landowners can, in fact, play a very uh, important role in watershed quantity and quality. The Oregon Forest Practice Rules give a good guidance of protecting riparian zones on fish-bearing streams uh, and even non-fish-bearing streams that have water flow all year long. We offer programs to help you uh, look at your riparian forest and decide what you might want to do with it. Um, oftentimes landowners have a lot of other objectives besides just growing trees for harvest they may want to do some stream enhancement so a lot of the things that we can do is to help landowners understand watersheds and watershed processes as well as enhancement of both the stream and the riparian area what i'm standing on here is a log jam artificially placed in here with monies from uh, the oregon department of fish and wildlife to increase the fish habitat in this stream. 
So as I stand up here looking down into this hole below me, there must be 40 or 50 little native red side trout. Most of them are about four to five inches long, but I can see an occasional seven to eight incher. Another good management project that John Belton has done on his property was to replace some culverts with bridges where his roads cross streams. A uh, question has come up is why we're uh, going away from culverts. Uh, they want natural bottom to the stream and they don't want anything that is unnatural for the fish because the fish are reluctant to pass through a long dark culvert. Another example of diversity on a tree farm can be found on the Bentz tree farm. Here, Clint Bentz explains how his family decided to incorporate another creative management idea into their operation. This is our fish hatchery. Thirty years ago when we bought this place, we had a lot of water on it, but not really any way to make money. And so we were looking for ways that we could uh, generate some income to pay the mortgage payment. And based on that, uh, we thought maybe fishing would be a good idea. So we built our fish hatchery, and we are the oldest private fish hatchery in the state of Oregon. We uh, we hatch out about 60,000 fingerling trout, rainbow trout each year, and we sell them to farmers and others that have ponds throughout the Willamette Valley. And it's just been a, it's been a nice part-time business. The Benses have also incorporated a fishing club on their tree farm, which neighboring families can belong to. They've built a lodge and have several ponds stocked with their fish. This is also an example of utilizing a tree farm for recreational activities open to the public. Another example of helping fish habitat is the bowders on their emerald forest tree farm. They have undertaken a fish ladder project to allow natural fish runs to continue upstream above their two-acre reservoir. We've looked at several examples of stream and riparian improvements. Now, what are some of the other important aspects a prospective landowner might want to consider? Well, one thing that anyone in any form of land management must be aware of are the tax consequences and tax benefits of tree farming. The tax benefits are, are very unusual uh, for certified tree farms. Um, most agricultural operations have, are required to show a profit to IRS once every seven years or you're not really a farm, you're a hobby farm and you're disqualified from depreciation and your investment in equipment and your operational expenses. This isn't a crop that grows like corn or soybeans where you can harvest it every year. You have to put the energy in, wait for the 60, 70 years for maturity before the crop can be harvested. So the law was based on logic uh, for the application in this particular farming practice. Besides being a tree farmer, Clint Bentz is also a CPA and estate planner. The IRS requires good record keeping in order to claim the deductions for operating a tree farm. And so having a, an accounting system where you can keep track of your expenses and your investments in the tree farm is just really critical. You know, due to the long-term long nature of tree farming, uh, many of these records need to be kept for several decades, so it's important that you keep good records and keep them together. Another important aspect of managing your tree farm is the long-term management goals you might have. Many people want to be able to pass these along to their next generation. Again, we're in a situation with a tree farm where I will plant the trees, my children will cultivate the trees, my grandchildren will harvest the trees. And so designing not only a, a plan where we can figure out how to handle the estate taxes, but also so that we can continue to have ongoing management for this tree farm over the generations is very critical. And it takes just as much work as it takes to plant and harvest the trees. There are other advantages to belonging to a nationwide organization. Some of these advantages include educational tours put on by other tree farmers annually. These tours are hosted by a tree farmer, usually in conjunction with various state agencies, like the Oregon State Extension Forestry Department. This tour at Lynn and Linda Butts shows a variety of management applications the Butts are using on their tree farm to improve the quality of the trees as they mature. Mike Bondi of OSU Extension Forestry is demonstrating methods of tree pruning to add value to the trees. 
Lynn Butts is demonstrating techniques he learned in Scandinavia and New Zealand on tours he has taken there to be able to add clear lumber by using a ladder system to prune limbs. Other tree farmers also sponsor educational tours, which are open to members and, in many cases, the public. We are committed to sharing what we know with the public. Indeed, if we are to survive in making a living from natural resources, we must do this. Help comes in all shapes and sizes. The key is to get the into the information stream. A call to the tree farm system gets a free consultation with a certified forester. Many tree farmers themselves also help teach interested landowners. This has been one of my pleasures, is to share my knowledge of forest management with many people. There are many people in this county that spend more than 100 hours per year sharing just such management skills. Another program that many tree farmers participate in has been a tradition for many years. That has been Bert and Betty Udell's Tree Day. This is a fun weekend of activities arranged for the whole family. Held every year at their tree farm near Lebanon, there are activities for children, classes for all ages, and learning activities and classes put on by a variety of professionals on all aspects of forest management. Many people come and camp at the Udell's forest campsites and enjoy the weekend of activities. This year, Bert and Betty were honored as the first green tag forest tree farm in America for their outstanding leadership and instruction to others worldwide. This brings up another important aspect of the tree farm system, recognition of good management and sustainable forestry practices. Every year, county, state, and national winners are judged through a very competitive process that is available to all tree farmers. Lynn and Linda Butts are shown here receiving the Oregon Tree Farmer of the Year Award from Betty Dennison, Oregon's Executive Director. Many people who own forest land want to live on their land. Some, like Mark Havel and his family, have built their home with timber from their land. We built our custom home entirely out of lumber. We milled out our own trees from uh, 13,000 um, 13, board feet of structural spruce to ash flooring, maple counters, um, alder buildings in the bedrooms and so on. Mark, an engineer by profession, discovered a useful application for his talents in meeting a need he saw for the small tree farmer. As an engineer, almost anything becomes possible. And seeing various things in the forest that aren't answered with other pieces of equipment uh, led us to develop these pieces of equipment and offer them, them through, uh, through Future Forestry Products. Our equipment line, the Future Forestry Products equipment line, was developed to fill an equipment void, we felt. Uh, there is virtually nothing else to do this sort of uh, low-cost, minimal negative impact effective management. Other people are using other specialized equipment to do various management activities on their forest land. Roy Byers is utilizing a small feller buncher to thin overcrowded trees on his tree farm. This light on land equipment has some tremendous environmental advantages in certain areas and allows Roy to accomplish his plans for this area. This is an area that we started working in last summer and we were we thinned out the diseased trees and what our goal was was to leave the biggest, healthiest trees or, or just the healthiest trees that we have. But the revenue that we get from these thinnings, we put them back into the stand. Whether it's through seeding, we, under, we seed the areas, the skid roads for, for increased forage for the cows and then for the deer and elk. And then we also use it to fund our reforestation efforts in areas where we don't think we will get adequate natural stocking. We will go in and, and interplant or underplant. And also the income from these intermediate thinnings is used to help pay for the place. It's good to find out who various professional contractors are and how their method of operation can best benefit your management requirements. There is also other professional forestry and marketing assistance available. Menasha, for instance, has a special program run by Phil Van Doren in the North Bend Coos Bay area called their Landowner Assistance Program. Private landowners want to make informed management decisions 
and Menasha developed their assistance program to provide that type of information to landowners. We can provide stand inventory information, do timber cruises, uh, give basic management advice, wrap it all together into a management plan for the landowners. We also can assist in harvesting timber and marketing that timber for the landowner, plus do the reforestation and help with stand management projects beyond that. These are just some of the examples of what people are doing on their tree farms. But the tree farm system brings so much more to the health and vitality of Oregon's forests. Tree farming is more than a business, it's a way of life. My father, who started this tree farm, always encouraged us to dream dreams and to have plans and to be always thinking about the future. And in his, his way of thinking, uh, planning for the future, you got 80% of the enjoyment in the planning and the working toward it, and only 20% of the enjoyment actually achieving it. The Oregon Tree Farm System, as part of the National Tree Farm System, encourage all of us as landowners to start thinking long term for our properties, not only for our own generation, but the generations to come. And so my primary recommendation for people who don't belong to the tree farm system is to join up. Membership in the tree farm system shows the greater public that you as a forest landowner are serious about managing your property on a long-term sustained yield basis. Want to know more? The Oregon Tree Farm System can help. Many of the resources shown in this program are offered free to participants. Call the Oregon Tree Farm System today and find out how you can begin to make a difference on your land.